Woo! Hey y'all. Can I just say, this is my third attempt to film this topic today. In case you were not aware, women's reproductive health is a huge topic and super confusing, super involved, super discombobulating. I don't understand a lot of it. I'm not even gonna lie. Got a uterus and I don't even know what I'm doing with it. This stuff is a mess. But today I wanted to address polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, and endometriosis. How are they different and how are they the same? I do have a cheat sheet right here. So if I keep looking down, that's why. <clears throat> so, first and foremost, PCOS is not something that I personally have. So I'm not overly familiar with it. Um, but I have done a lot of research to see how it does relate to endometriosis, which I do have. Um, and it has been ruled out in my case, but I'm not overly, overly familiar. So don't take my word as, you know, the Holy Gospel or anything. Not to say that I'm not correct, because I am correct. I just want to say, if I misspeak a term here or there, that's why. Anyway, PCOS causes enlarged ovaries, and it also creates the potential for small cysts to be on the outer edges of those ovaries. Um, whereas with endometriosis, it's caused by the endometrial cells growing outside of the uterus, or endometrial-like cells growing outside of the uterus. Um, and then attaching to surrounding tissue and organs. So it is possible to have both PCOS and endometriosis, and actually it's not uncommon for people to have both, but just because you have one does not mean that you're gonna have the other. I mean, it's just not uncommon is all, unfortunately, because we can't catch a break. Um, whereas endometriosis cannot be diagnosed with any sort of a lab test or blood work or anything like that, there is more success in diagnosing PCOS with lab work because it's marked by an increase in androgen hormones and that can be measured in lab work. So my understanding is that increase in androgen hormones, enlarged ovaries, and irregular cycles are the three ear markers for PCOS and most diagnosticians are comfortable with the diagnosis of PCOS in the presence of two of the three symptoms. So while it's not like a definitive, definitive thing, it is a bit more firm um, because you do have the, um, the lab work to back up the information. My words are not coming today. They're just not working for me. So both endometriosis and PCOS uh, affect approximately one in 10 people with uteruses. Uteri? Uteruses? Hmm. Either way, one in 10 each. So um, it's, it's a pretty common issue on both sides. Some of the most common symptoms for PCOS, um, irregular cycles, of course, because, you know, reproductive health. Uh, also excess hair growth and probably not like the kind that you want, like, you know, flowing locks, more like inappropriate facial hair sort of thing. Um, also earmarked by weight fluctuations, particularly weight gain, leaning towards the side of obesity because we are talking about hormones and them being um, unbalanced and, you know, not working in your favor. Um, that also leads to the potential for diabetes because insulin is another hormone and insulin is the biggest part of diabetes, obviously. So, uh, mostly the symptoms for endometriosis are irregular cycles um, and pain. So, um, from the irregular cycle standpoint, it's very similar for both. Um, PCOS and endometriosis are the two most common causes of infertility, and even being the most common causes, their their actual cause of these conditions is unknown. Uh, they are both chronic, they are both hormone driven, and the most common treatment for both is actually birth control. 
Um, so again, you're talking about hormones again, and this is just trying to replace what you have lows of and decrease what you have highs of. And yeah. Um, it's possible that either one could be genetic, um, but it's equally as possible that they're not genetic. Sometimes mothers and daughters have it, sometimes sisters have it, sometimes cousins have it. Just because you you have it doesn't mean your child will have it, just because your cousin has it doesn't mean that you will have it sort of thing. Um, but there seems to be more prevalence in families with a history of it. I'm not really sure how the technicalities on that work, but I've heard that repeatedly. So both do have the potential for surgical intervention. With endometriosis, it's common to have laparoscopic surgeries to remove uh, scar tissue and cysts and remnants of a ruptured cyst and things like that. Whereas with PCOS, it's common to have surgeries to um, clean up, if you will, the ovary where there was the potential for the small cysts to form and possibly also scar tissue there as well. So. <clears throat> Surgery is not going to cure anything, but obviously it's more to treat symptoms. Um, I think one of the most important things to note for both PCOS and endometriosis is the potential for um, the increased chance for other health conditions. So PCOS will put you at a higher risk for um, weight gain, which comes with its own you know, hazards, obviously. Um, higher blood pressure, higher cholesterol, etc. Um, but also the risk for diabetes because of the increase in insulin um, and also depression because major um, a major component of, of, of reproductive health is mental health. Uh, for endometriosis, sometimes the other um, the other health conditions that come on board with that would be something you know, acne, back pain, um, fatigue, <laughs> brain fog, you know, things like that. So uh, there's just so, so many symptoms that become symptoms of symptoms of symptoms of symptoms, which for both of these diseases makes it harder to get a diagnosis Timely because you're treating symptoms of symptoms of symptoms of symptoms and it's just a mess so I cannot stress enough that Depression and mental health go hand in hand for both PCOS and endometriosis. Um, I think that's an important one to note because Like with most chronic conditions with most yeah, with most chronic conditions and with most autoimmune diseases and Things that you know there's no end in sight and all it does is cause you pain or discomfort or disrupts your life plans there's a huge potential for depression and anxiety so for the most part the conversation on, on PCOS and endometriosis has so much content it's just not possible to cover it all but I just wanted to touch on the dissimilarities and also um, the difference is because there's a whole lot in common um, But hey, you know, they each have their own attributes yay And just because you have one doesn't mean you have both but you certainly do have the potential to have both It's like I said not uncommon. So I hope that we could have a lot more discussions about this because I feel like it's I mean if you're talking PCOS affects one in ten women or people with a uterus and endometriosis affects one in ten people with an with a uterus that's a huge portion of your population that's huge that's huge and that basically means like if you're standing in a room with ten women at least one of them at least one of them is going to have this condition and how many people have it and are undiagnosed and how many people are incorrectly diagnosed um, if it's worthy of a discussion that's all I'm saying so um, in the comments let me know if you have one or both or <laughs> if you need more information or more clarity on that um, the brain fog is kind of heavy today 
kind of struggling with that. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. Take care.